What if uh, our search for cosmic answers isn't just about finding more data, but about, well, daring to imagine more? <laughs> Today, we're diving into some really, really mind-bending ideas. They come from a Q&A with Harvard professor Avi Loeb, uh, you know, a ma major voice in the whole search for intelligent life out there. Yeah, this deep dive, it's centered around his new book, Chronicles of Extraterrestrial Architecture. And honestly, it really pushes us to rethink some basic assumptions. We're going to get into some depth debates, everything from how science should work to what being human even means in this huge universe. So our mission for you listening is to pull out the most thought-provoking bits and maybe think about what it really means to, you know, open our minds to the cosmic unknown. Okay, let's jump right in. Loeb makes this uh, pretty provocative claim. Imagination is actually more important than knowledge when we're exploring space. Now, as scientists, we're always taught data first, right? Empirical proof. So why does he argue for imagination taking the lead? What's the thinking there? It is a bit upside down, isn't it, compared to the usual science mantra. But Loeb's argument is, well, nature itself is just fundamentally more imaginative than we are. Our own biases, our sort of human-centric view, means we often miss real breakthroughs. Why? Because we just can't conceive of the full richness of what might be out there. He actually highlights this common pitfall. He says scientists can uh, stay ignorant by deliberately avoiding facts that might shake up their comfortable beliefs. Yeah, and finding truly new things, exploring those virgin territories, as he calls them. That takes serious time, serious money, and real effort, you know, not just tweaking old ideas. He huh. gives this great example. Imagine astrobiologists only looking for microbial fingerprints, tiny life signs. Good. Well, they might totally miss, say, giant alien constructions simply because they refuse to imagine they could exist. It's like uh, his analogy of the lonely person who assumes no good partners exist, so they never go on dates, they limit their own chances. That's... No. Yeah, that really hits home. It makes you question your own blind spots, doesn't it? And it definitely sparks a debate about what scientific exploration should even look like. So building on that openness, he also brings up cosmic modesty. What exactly is that? And why is it important for, say, architects thinking about space habitats? Right. Cosmic modesty, as Loeb sees it, it's this humbling idea that all our architecture here on Earth, it's totally human focused, made for us on our planet with our conditions. But space, I mean, it offers just vast amounts of real estate, yeah. extreme conditions, stuff way beyond anything we deal with here. Mm -hmm. Loeb thinks finding actual alien architecture, maybe on megastructures out in interstellar space, hmm. think like a Dyson sphere. Wow. Yay. Finding something like that wouldn't just give us new design ideas. It would instill this profound sense of awe. It forces us to drop our human-centric viewpoint and adopt real uh, cosmic modesty. So it's less about better blueprints and more about fundamentally recalibrating our place in the cosmos. Yeah. Humbling, like you said. 